and welcome to How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta. And I'm Connie, and we are two uh, social media experts here, once again. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but we are talking about social media again, and more of how it relates to family and raising children. I was wondering where you were going to go with that when you paused. I was See, like, what word is she going to pick? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and, you know, I'm trying to keep it the, like, spare of the moment. I really should just come up with my puns ahead of time, but that just seems like a lot of work and a little bit uh, too framed and less spontaneous. Touche. Just trying to be spontaneously funny. I don't know if it's working or not. Let me know. <laughs> we'll have to find out eventually. I'm sure somebody will tell us. Like these Oh, yeah. Two. I don't know. They think they're funny, but they're really not. And then really we'll be like, yep. <laughs> thanks. We already said that. Yeah, we already did. Multiple times. So, yeah, we figured that we would continue carrying on about social media because it is such a big aspect, especially right now, because let's face it, everybody's looking at their phone and reading the news, and that's their only way of getting out right now. So, yeah, we'll just keep talking about it. Well, and this is a little bit different uh, of an a- of an aspect to social media. Family. Love them and hate them. I want to preface this by saying you don't need to fight with your family on Facebook. Oh, God. No, please don't. I mean, and we've had that. Ha- we've both had that happen to us, kind of, by our favorite cousin mm-hmm. who loves to post exactly what is wrong with your post and just lay it out in some bullet points for you. And then there's this great thing. It's called a mute button. So, uh, I, I, I did that over actually over this weekend to some friends because I was tired of their bullshit. You know, and it wouldn't be such a big deal about like what's wrong with your post. If he made it funny, would comment other things too, like nice things, but literally the only time he ever comments is to say something negative. Like, you spelled that wrong, or that needs a period, or you're missing quotation marks. And it's like, bitch, if you want to be a grammar Nazi, go be a fucking English teacher. Well, and also, it's you're not writing a book like you've already published. You are writing an informal little paragraph to describe your picture on Instagram or your post on Facebook or a little funny thing on Twitter. Uh, it's informal. You are allowed to not use the correct punctuation. You can have whatever the fuck you want in there. And there's so many like abbreviations. I don't even mm-hmm. know half of them anymore. It's like I used to know no. a shit ton of them. And now I'm like, uh, BRB. <laughs> LOL. Yeah. That's it. That's all I got, you know? Yeah. That's all I got, too, pretty much. Thank God for Google, because then when I see the ones I don't know, I'm, like, typing it into Google. Like, what is this? What is this? Actually, there's also, like, a game with that kind of, like, slang. It's, like, it's similar to Cards Against Humanity, but it's text messages. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was, we were not great at playing it. Tom's nieces and nephews were really good at it, because they knew all of the slang. But his mom was asking, like, each card, what does this mean? What does that mean? (laughs) <laughs> oh goodness but yes from a, like my point of view with Facebook and social media and stuff I do like it for some aspects because I am away from family and it does give me a nice aspect if I can see like Connie was at the pool on 4th of July and I can see my dad was reading whatever book like I like it because it keeps me feeling not so far away sometimes of course that, that's the aspect. The only reason why I keep my Instagram and I don't have Facebook anymore and I definitely don't regret it. Um, but it's because like I would still have that if I was in your situation and, and further away from home. Me and Tom talked about actually today reactivating Facebook and I'm like, nope, I don't want to hear people's problems anymore. And I find myself less on my phone and more interacting with people. If I don't have Facebook, less yeah. distraction. I've definitely considered getting rid of it, but I literally had one of our uncles come up to me and say, like, I love your Facebook post. I love seeing what you're doing. I miss you. It makes me feel connected to you. And I was like, oh, OK, well, I guess I'll keep it around because that's really and it, nice. Because it works both ways. 
Yeah, it does have some nice aspects. I think if I still lived at home, it might be a different story. But yeah, um, being so far away and being able to like see all the nieces and nephews and they can see Jackson, it's just, uh, it's nice. Yeah. It, versus where I am at home, I can see almost all of our cousins, our aunts and uncles on a weekly basis. So I don't yeah. particularly mind too much. I'm able to go to every holiday. You aren't. Yeah, so it's it's nice to be able to share those kinds of things and see what everybody's up to. So that's the nicer side of social media. And, and like, in a kid aspect with my little guy, I definitely keep more of an attention on him. Um, we just bought a Nintendo Switch, which I was kind of against for a really long time. But I decided I would let him have one for his birthday and just really monitor how often and stuff he's on there. But it's definitely something you have to pay attention to now, like where our parents didn't have to worry about it as much. Oh, where there's sure. online communities, like Fortnite is like the big thing right now. But it has an online community, so you have to make sure that there's not like a person in there who's an actual 40-year-old adult pretending to be a 15-year-old kid that's like baiting these people. And it's terrible that you even have to think about that, but that's the age we live in. And you have to think about that for any and all also social media for him. Mm-hmm. Are you guys going to like when do you when are you going to let him have like a Facebook or something? Oh, that probably won't be for a long time. Um, the nice thing, too, about the switch, and I guess it is still kind of social media. There is an app that goes with it. That's parental controls. And it literally tells me, like, how long he's been on there, what game he's currently playing. So that also helps and they have too. the same thing for Facebook well, and computers in general too. Yeah, they do. They do. It that is nice that they offer all these things because even on his tablet he has a Kindle and I guess Roblox is the newest thing. So some of the parents out there will know what I'm talking about. But it's it's kind of like it's almost kind of like YouTube in a way. I think I don't know. I don't completely understand it. But you're kind of watching like other people play videos, and, but it has a huge online community that is mm-hmm. not monitored so I mean again you can definitely have some predators in there so it just makes me I don't even let him use that a couple of his friends do but I don't even let him use it because it just makes me it makes me nervous nervous. yeah I don't I don't trust people and he's so you know kids are so young and so naive that they they don't even think about stuff like that they Mm -hmm. legitimately think you know Tom 446 is an eight-year-old boy just like him exactly you like how I pick Tom randomly? <laughs> yeah. Like, nice. Because <laughs> my husband is a creeper. I'm just kidding. He is not. Yeah, I always thought that my niece and nephew were exposed to it way too soon. They were 10 or younger. And they have, like, Snapchat. Oh, and no. She, she's 14. No. She's 13 or 14. She just graduated eighth grade. I'm like, "Mm, you can't really control Snapchat and you could be getting anything. And actually, then my brother-in-law went and looked on her Instagram and she just has a bunch of like old guys following her. Yes, yeah, there's like a crazy. list of old guys. And mm-hmm. but then and um, he contacted her mom and is like, like, did you see this? She's like, well, yeah, but that's not the one that she uses. Or she doesn't use that that account at all. And I was like, yeah, but how do you know? Yeah. And that's the hard thing. You know, at least if you let them have, like, Facebook or Instagram, that is something, for the most part, you can monitor. You can make sure that you have the login password. And even if you don't necessarily log in very often to check like the messages and stuff, everything else you can see, you can see what pictures they're posting. You can see what's on their story, Snapchat, you look at it, it's gone. So like they could be sending out any inappropriate. Yeah. Like at 14 and you don't know any better and you want to be cool. Like not saying all 14 year old girls or boys would do this. They could be sending inappropriate pictures that are now some creeper has, and they don't even know any better. And it's just Snapchat is just a big, that's a huge no, no. There's no way to monitor what they're doing on there, really. And in general, I think both on Facebook and on Instagram, I also don't think that she's really being monitored, to be honest. Oh, well, and that would that freak good. me out. And me and Tom have talked about, when would we allow our kids? I'm like, yeah, not till fucking high school. Mm-mm. For sure. Well, and apparently Facebook is phasing out, according to the younger people. 
because who was I talking to? I think it was Jackson and some of his friends. And they were like, no, people our age don't do Facebook. It's just all about Instagram and Snapchat. So apparently Facebook is not going to be the thing anymore for the younger generation anyway. It, it'll it'll be Snapchat probably. That's all that my niece is on is Snapchat. And TikTok. TikTok's the new. Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. And it's just the newest, I mean, biggest thing. Smart. Yeah. It's just the newest, biggest thing that people are doing right now. Um, yeah. I don't think I'll let. Jackson do any of that for a while I might let him do like an Instagram when he hits high school or something but of course Kyle and I will reevaluate that as the time comes and it'll depend on how mature he is himself and oh. how much I can trust him and then of course I'm going to have his login and all that and I'm going to check it well and and as a parent like it's great though that you have the switch because you can see how he does now yeah She's- will do in the future and I actually had a girlfriend who was not allowed to have like I think I had ha, taking it real back guys MySpace. Oh, in junior high. MySpace oh MySpace you know actually I tried and blogged I, I logged on on MySpace I, I like figured out what my password was I was like oh never doing this again this is horrible <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to relive those teenage years but Remember when I you either, used to fight for who was in your number one spot? Like, people were like, no, I want to be number one. Like, no, the boyfriend should be number one. Like, no, your best friend should be number one. And it's like, oh, my God. Exactly. And then that, like, playlist of, like, mm-hmm. shit songs. Basically, My Chemical Romance. It's beside the point. I was in a phase. <laughs> Anyway, but, like, I knew my girlfriend, her parents didn't even let her have, like, a MySpace, a Facebook until she was in college. Mm-hmm. Until she, Basically, until she was able to afford her own regular phone, like, right when the iPhone and stuff came out. That was when she was allowed to have it. And she still ended up getting into a lot of trouble. Because there is a lot of trouble that is out there that is not on yeah. social media. Well, and when, you know, because I'm older than Connie, when Facebook came out for the first time, you had to have a college email address to be on Facebook. It wasn't like it is now where anybody can join. You had to have, you know, an at edu email address. And then the college also had to be involved. Not all colleges were on there at the time either. So when Facebook first came up, it was meant for college students. I would almost prefer it to have stayed that way. I feel like it was better. And then like, you kind of had something to look forward to like, Oh, when I go to college, I can like meet new people. I can start this Facebook. Like it's a way to connect. And it was actually a great idea. Cause it was a way to, when you were a freshman in college, it was a way to, okay, well this person's a freshman here too. And so is this person like, and look, they live right by me and you could add them as a friend and get to know. I mean, it was, it was kind of a cool way to help the freshman experience. And then it totally morphed into something else. Yeah, I actually remember when I was, like, a freshman or sophomore in high school, you were the one who was like, Connie, no, sign up for Facebook. You can do it now. Now it's not just for college students. Yeah. And so you are the one who ended up pushing me into Facebook, and then I deleted it. I was like, no, Rita, bye. <laughs> yep, it was, the, it was all the thing when it first came out. Oh, it was all the rage. But, yeah. And, I, then, just, and then I was like, it'll never replace my space. <laughs> no. <laughs> but oh, uh, technology is clearly a fluid thing because there's always the newest and greatest and whatever. Right. Well, and it's just, it's become so hard to protect your kids at this point because there is so much on the internet. There's so much in like the dark interwebs or whatever they call it, the black web. Like you, it just feels like you can't let them do anything without making sure like even when this whole social distancing and distance learning started happening, he's like, Oh, I've got this new thing that I can do. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, this doesn't look like a very good learning website. Like, so even those things you have to pay attention to, it's like, it's got a secret underbelly if it's not the right online learning thing. Oh God. Glad I did not have to teach a child. Yeah. And me and Tom have talked about it and we were like, yeah, they're not even going to get a cell phone. Like a legit cell phone, like we'll go get them like a flip phone where all they have to do, like where they have to work for their texts, you know, yeah. to call us in like junior high when you start having a lot of those after school kids activities and they might run late and stuff like that. Um, well, but they're like, other than that, you you then have to afford your own phone if you want an iPhone in like 
high school because with an iPhone, you then get all of those apps. You can sign up for all of those things, even if there are parental controls. Right. They could still sign up for any of it, right. honestly. Well, and they have this new thing now where you can get your kid. It's like a watch, and it's a way for them to communicate with you without having to worry about anything else. They, It's like a watch where they can just call. I think there's like three contacts. Nice. We'll get them yeah. the watch. I just kind of want them to struggle with a flip phone and having to press the number three times to select whatever letter. I want them to struggle is what I'm saying. I think kids should know the struggles of technology. They shouldn't just get a great iPhone right off the bat. Oh, no. I we, We've talked about it, too, and the earliest we're going to get him, like, an actual cell phone would be when he starts driving. Nice. Like, like an actual, like, iPhone? Or like just no, a- I don't even know about an iPhone, but just a phone because things can happen when you're driving, obviously. So that would be the only time I would want him to have a phone that if something happened, and obviously not to use it while driving, but if something happened, like he popped a oh, tire no. or the car she broke down. When, when they start driving, so at like 16, you wouldn't yeah. let them uh, ha- let them have one at, in your like freshman year when you're in um, no. high school and you still have all those activities? Nope. Probably not. I mean, it might change, but as far as I'm concerned, he's not getting one until he dies. Like, I'm going to look into that watch thing. And if he still has it when he's going into high school, oh, well. If he's embarrassed, oh, well. Keep it in your backpack. Call call me when you are ready. Yeah, I think I got my first flip phone when I was a freshman because I had I had after school choir concerts that didn't go till nine o'clock and I had to call mom. And it was just easier for her to give me Luke's old phone mm-hmm. and try to get, like, she looked into getting one of those, like, at the time, I think they were called, like, fireflies, where you can only call your parents. Yeah. It's much cheaper and much af- more affordable just to give me Luke's old cell phone. You know what I did? I used a pay phone. There were no pay phones. Not at that time. Not anymore. That just shows the the age difference. If I yeah. had to call home, I used to pay. I used to pay phone, or because my mom assumed that all of my friends had phones, I borrowed a friend's phone. Hey, can I borrow yeah. your phone just for a second so I can call my mom? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I didn't get a phone. I didn't get a phone until I convinced a boyfriend of mine to get me one, like on his contract. Really? And I you was already to, driving and you everything. Convinced a boyfriend to put you on your contract? Damn. Yeah, because even though I was driving, (laughs) I know, I was driving and everything, and my mom still wouldn't give me a phone. So I convinced a boyfriend, and then finally, like, once she finally found out, like, what happened and and how we got all, then she finally was like, all right, so you don't do this again. (laughs) Let me get you your own phone. But I I just had, you know, the old Nokia, square Nokia phone. wasn't even a flip phone. That was, it was, yeah, mine was an an old flip phone with no camera. It was just an old one See, of Luke's. And that's how things have changed when we were younger. And then, of course, when our parents were younger, we they didn't have to worry about any of this preying on kids anymore, you know. And bullying has become a bigger thing like we've already kind of talked about. So it's just there's so many aspects that you have to watch and make sure. Yeah, and that- I can't even honestly imagine, like, junior high and high school getting worse than it already was. Because, I mean, I was for sure bullied. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the time... They didn't follow me onto Facebook or MySpace or whatever to pick on me. So if you think about it, in reality, I got off pretty easy from the few bullies that I had growing up. No, they would just get on AIM and, like, write an away message that says, like, I hate you. (laughs) Exactly. Well, and it was, like, really honestly I was like bullied in such a pathetic way that it was like are you kidding me that's all you can come up with is making fun of my last name I can make fun of my last name all day try something more original (laughs) you know and now these kids just whoo they started rumors about my like niece liking girls and stuff like that like it's a lot more like inappropriate for some people who are in junior high yeah yeah, like well, most of it, and it's uh, well. First of all, it's of a sexual nature. First of all, and second right. of all, like 
I love all of the memes that are like, this is me when I was in fifth, when I was 14 or 13 or whatever. And it's like an ugly kid with like braces. And then it's like these kids nowadays and like they look flawless. I'm like, yeah, nope. That is oh, not no. going to be my, probably. <laughs> not if they take after me. Oh, no, I, I definitely get terrible pictures. Yeah. I don't believe those people. Everybody has one bad school picture at some point or another. You have to. You have to. Well, I mean, that was another thing is, I mean, I was not allowed to wear makeup until I was like 16. So you're never going to have a flawless looking photo with no makeup. And even at 16, I had no idea how to apply. And we did not have a thing called YouTube to look up these crazy makeup tutorials. Yeah, I don't think I ever really wore makeup at all in high school maybe until like my senior year because I did not care (laughs) well I had to wear makeup for choir concerts or else you would look like a pale ass ghost on stage yeah I think we did for orchestra concerts but I didn't wear it every day that's for sure no no I I never wore makeup I only wore makeup to like dances and stuff and I was not great with makeup I normally just really liked the eyeliner because hashtag emo (laughs) <laughs> well and eyeliner's fun I mean I still don't really wear any makeup if I do it's eyeliner and mascara or just mascara and that's it I mean why you don't really need to wear makeup until you makeup <laughs> well you don't really need to wear it until you're older you don't have anything to cover really when you're younger I mean unless you have like a bad pimple situation going on or something but most of the time when you're younger you really don't have anything to cover up I just have a fat face that needs to be trimmed out with some some extreme contouring. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, back to our social media. Next we episode. Just, <laughs> we just wanted to definitely make the point, which I'm sure most people that are parents know, but people that maybe are just becoming parents, that you definitely need to pay attention to what your kids are doing. Pay attention Even to their hanging out with. Yeah, and even if you're letting them on shit pretty young. You should still be paying attention. And I do think that there are limits. Like my one girlfriend who is not allowed pretty much any phone, computer, any piece of technology when she was younger and was very, her parents were very, very strict with her and made her go to church three times a week. I think they should have uh, lessened the reins. Then maybe she wouldn't have ended up uh, pregnant at the age of 16 with twins. Well, and I think it varies because my parents were pretty strict. Um, I never had video games. We had a computer. I was only allowed, I think, an hour a day on the computer. They monitored whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't didn't have, obviously didn't have Facebook, didn't have MySpace, didn't have any of that. I didn't have a phone until I was, I didn't have a legit phone that I didn't get from my boyfriend until I was, like, pretty much out of high school, 17, 18, like, my senior year. So my parents were pretty strict, but I mean, I came out okay, I think for the most part. So not everybody turns into a bad kid if you are too tight, but I still like the point Connie's making. Like you don't need to suffocate your kids, but you definitely need to pay attention. I, to what I was going doing. to say, like you, you went out, you hung out with friends. Like she was barely allowed to even hang out with me. It I was, was only I occasional was. Saturday. I was allowed to go in and like hang out with her. But I did have the strictest, what do you call it, curfew of anybody. I had the earliest curfew of anybody because uh, I think everybody else was like midnight or something like that. And I had to be home by like 10. I only, I was only ever able to go be out till 10. 10 was definitely my max unless I was sleeping over at a girlfriend's house. Yeah, then yeah, unless, I was ha- so- yeah then unless you're having to sleep over. And I never really did sleepovers because I've had anxiety my whole life. I don't like sleeping in places I don't know, so I didn't really do sleepovers anyway. But the point that we were both basically trying to make is you don't want to suffocate your kids. You want them to have the freedom. You want them to explore and learn from their surroundings, but you want to keep an eye on them because if you give them too much room, they're absolutely going to take more. Well, and honestly, for her, it was probably more of like a rebellious streak because she got to a certain point in high school where she just became a ho-ho and you know what else is going to happen and then the more they tried to control her the more she rebelled there's definitely a fine line between trying trying to figure out 
not being too tough and but trying to save somebody when they're already on a dangerous path. Yeah, I think my mom could have probably been a little bit uh, tougher on the uh, brothers. She was pretty laxed with that, in my opinion. But see, what she would say is, I never yelled at either one or at any of the children. Mm -hmm. It was only a conversation between me and your brother. You didn't hear it. I yelled at him. Mm-hmm. You don't know. I would say that to her all the time. I'd be like, you never yell at them. You never punish them. You mm-hmm. only very rarely punish them. Like, what the hell? Like, you're harder on me than you are on them. And she said, uh-uh-uh. I talk to them individually. I don't let e- you all know who's punished for what reason. Yeah. That is a conversation between me and your brother. I feel like parents do tend to, to be harder on girls because you do have to, like, there's the pregnancy aspect and like, yeah, not that's to say, what like, my mom would say. Well. <laughs> well, and I'm not saying that I agree with it, but I, I get why certain parents or family members think that they have to watch for girls more because they could get pregnant. And it is a, a bigger deal because the guys can essentially just walk away. Not saying that it's a good thing and that yeah, they should and any of that, but like they are that's... not stuck like a girl would be. So yeah. I kind of understand the side of why some parents are stricter on girls, but it definitely shouldn't be that way. I mean, there's a way to do it without having to be stricter or give, have different rules versus girl versus boys. Cause it is going to just create that mentality, right? Like you talked about. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, my mom put the fear of God, like I feared sex until I think I was 18. So, you know, it worked out real well, but anyway, what I said was uh, my mom, uh, she basically made me fear sex in general because you could get pregnant and a guy could walk away and you can't. That's your problem. Now, that's one thing my mom was was good at. I never feared it. We had very honest conversations, sometimes too much on my side. But we did have that conversation, which everybody should have that conversation with their kids because it is important and they need to know the importance of it and the consequences of it. And you don't even necessarily have to tell them like, don't ever do it. Like I know certain no, that's people, that's basically what I was told. Right. And I get that certain people feel that way. Like you do not have sex until marriage and that's fine, but there's you know, not everybody believes that way. So there is also the approach of like, I understand that you're going to do this, but if you're going to do this one, you need to know the consequences and two, you need to protect yourself. Yeah. And also she had like two great examples for me. She was like, look at your two cousins, you Mm -hmm. know, don't be like them. And anytime I was alone in the car with my mom, when I was like in my high school years, she'd be like, now do not be like your cousins. You do not want to be (laughs) a teenage mother. It is not going to work out very well. Please don't. (laughs) Just don't. (laughs) Yeah, just don't. And And just know. And a conversation of you need to protect yourself. I think she added that a little bit in, but whatever. I feel like that's, I don't remember like verbatim, obviously, what conversation I had with my mom, but I'm pretty sure that was the conversation because I never, ever remember her telling me like, no, don't do it. It was just, you know, make sure that it's with the right person. Make sure you care about them. Make sure if you do decide to, you protect yourself, like all those kind of important things, like basically telling me it's up to me, but it it you should consider these factors oh for sure yeah and and also I was a weird girl in high school I did not have very many boyfriends weren't we all (laughs) yeah (laughs) so me more than others honestly (laughs) honestly I'm still working through it still pretty weird (laughs) but that's you know that's a perfect point though to make because with social media nowadays social media obviously is also normalizing sex and all that kind of stuff, which is fine, but you need to control what to find a hookup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it there is are dating apps out there. It is another type of social media. It is. You should it definitely is. make sure no one is on until after high school. Cause that should not be yeah. necessary. That's that was where I was going with it. Like there's a lot of it's a lot more open out there, even from when we were kids. And even though it wasn't all that long ago, it is 
a lot of information be called can be found quickly and you definitely don't want your seven, eight, nine, ten year old to be finding this information at seven, eight, nine or ten. Like we need to reserve that for later. Or you need to have the conversation with them first. They don't need to be finding about about the birds and the bees from some half naked Instagram photo. They need to be finding it out from mom and dad. For sure. That's the scariest thing to me about social media. Um, and if we ever do adopt and have a girl, I think I will feel more protected, protective of her. I won't I won't have different rules. I will just feel more protective because I feel like as girls, we are preyed upon more. You know, we're, we're viewed as easier targets and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying that is correct, but people do view us as, you know, easier targets so you are going to worry about I feel like if I adopt a girl I'm going to worry about her more but I'm definitely not going to have stricter rules I'm just going to worry about her more and I think there's a different a difference now a little bit from when we were younger there was no rules really Mm -hmm. internet was so new Mm -hmm. they didn't have all of these like this is what you need to teach your kids when you're they're going on Facebook, Instagram, yada yada yada. They didn't have any of that cuz everything was still so new, so it's kind of still like a free for all. Right. There was no Excuse rules me. that my mom was going to teach me about being on MySpace except for don't post anything that you wouldn't want me to see. Right, which is a great rule of thumb like don't put anything on the internet that if your mom or grandma or somebody saw that you wouldn't be fucking mortified. <laughs> That's still a great rule of rule of thumb. Oh, if your perfect. grandma would if your grandma would go, Oh my Lanta at your picture, do not put it up. <laughs> well, and also like but I also don't remember there being any like and this is what you don't like proper using the internet, you know, type of rules. Because you could type in something seemingly innocent into Google and get a whole lot of not innocent. At all. That's, that is very true. It is. It's, it's there wasn't a crazy. lot of these, like, internet type of, like, parent blocking mm-hmm. stuff that there is now where you yeah. can see everything. Everything was too new when we were young. I feel like my parents more worried about somebody, like, kidnapping me or stuff like that. Like, especially when you're a, you're in college and you're walking a campus at night or walking along. That was more of the worry then. But... I started learning martial arts at a young age. So my dad legitimately said to me, I'm not worried about you. I know that if somebody snuck up on you, you would give them hell and high water. (laughs) So that was more of the worry, at least for me, when I was younger, was more worried about like somebody kidnapping you. The physical kidnapping and not being, uh, you know, yeah, online or that many other things that could happen online. Yeah, it wasn't about online like it is now. Now a lot more people are getting hurt. You know, there's keyboard worries and people are cyberbullying and people are committing suicide because of cyberbullying. So it's, a, I mean, we still have those physical aspects too, but now you've got the cyber stuff to worry about also. And you've got phishing and all that kind oh, of yeah, shit. all that. You have a lot more worries, even as an adult, not even just your children. Oh, yeah. Uh, we there there are people that are even targeting just like military families, so we get even more. It's crazy, but it's it's about teaching your kids what to look for, the signs to look for, and to teach I mean them honestly, have... there's signs that they should look for in their lives in general. Oh like with yeah. People. yeah. I don't because you can see like. If somebody's acting strange to you online, you should also know if somebody's acting weird in person as well. Yes. Like, if you're going to get kidnapped, yeah, you should probably know both of those things. You should also not meet up with anybody online. Like, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. Yes, which is the main point we wanted to, to get and just to talk about the differences. And, again, like I said earlier, make sure you're just watching what your kids are doing. Make sure they're not meeting anybody in the back alley at two o'clock in the morning with some random stranger that they think is a 10 year old kid on Instagram. Who's really a 45 year old pervert. Like make sure you know what your kids are doing. Well, and FYI, you can't necessarily always stop them because no. my girlfriend went yeah. out behind her parents back, used me as cover to go meet a boyfriend in Chicago, the South side of Chicago. And she got lost and her yeah. parents blamed me. 
Gotta love it. I don't think yeah, they we found do- it the next day, but still, they definitely found out because, I mean, you're gone yeah. for X amount of time. You know, that's what it, and that's the other thing. You can't be perfect as a parent. They're going to do things. They're going to do things that you aren't not going to, that you aren't going to know about, but you at least got to do the best you can and make sure that they know about what's out there and what to look for and what kind of consequences they could potentially come across. And for us, I mean, we're using our experience, our experiences with like the internet and stuff to figure out what we do or don't want our kids to see online. It's just, it's so scary, everything that's out there. I mean, not even, like, even cyberbullying aside, just the people that are literally preying on children. Like, get into chat rooms with children that are just trying to play a game and be kids, and they're literally trying to lure them. I mean, that's that's a terrifying thought. Yeah. It's not a good thought, anyway. No, and, like, no parent wants to think about somebody preying on their child. He's so cute. Flynn's laying down on my foot. It's adorable. Sorry, guys. And Connie gets distracted. The cuteness going on. I can't even see the cuteness going on. Connie's just too distracted. No, oh, it's just really adorable. All right, my cat's meowing to come back in now. <laughs> <laughs> the cat wants a lot, you know, a lot of attention going on over here. He's a cat. Cats don't know what they want. Basically. Uh, anyway. So that was our big thing. Uh, actually, let's go back to family just for a little bit because we talked about kids for so long. So you got the basic point, y'all. Just pay attention to what your kids are doing. Keep them safe, but still let them learn and become the humans that they were meant to be. Just just be that backbone. Oh, for sure. But as family aspect of social media and stuff, like we kind of talked about already, it's a good way to keep in contact if you live away, but... The only other point that I kind of wanted to make, and I don't know what else Connie wants to make, is just don't compare yourself to what your family is doing, kind of just like with the other people that you see in your life. Because, again, you're just seeing whatever they want you to see. And I know some people, like my best friend, for example, she gets really competitive with her younger sister. So oh, younger God. sister got – she got married first and she had babies first. And it's like this isn't – a it's not a competition. competition. And, just, and just because you're older doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do things first. So mm-hmm. don't let social media make you think that you're behind in life. Like, oh, she's married and we graduated together. So that means I should be married. Like, no, you aren't on the same timeline. Yeah. I actually, though, for a while, definitely thought that I was going to have a kid before Luke or Mitchell. It just didn't end up that way, and that's fine, and I don't see it as a competition. Isaac, my nephew, mm-hmm. not Isaac, <laughs> my nephew <laughs> is absolutely adorable, and it's, um, it's and life, I don't care. It doesn't matter. And life isn't a competition. It doesn't matter. You will it, get to your point someday. But like, like we talked about in the last episode, it's that like the lights and stuff that make you feel like it is a competition but yeah Mm -hmm. it's not and I think that's one of the reasons why it's helped not having Facebook and in general also like I see a lot of like combative posts that family members have posted that you just kind of want to argue with Mm because like they're not with your views and it goes back to the last episode that we already talked about like just don't yeah, just don't. But, I, but what is lovely is that there are the buttons to mute mm-hmm. so that you don't see their posts for a while. And there's also, like, on Instagram, I believe, it says stop showing photos like these or something like that. Yeah. So, like, so if you don't want to see it for a while, you can just stop. It'll stop for a bit, you know? Too bad there's not a dislike button. No, I'm just kidding. That would cause a lot of shit. <laughs> I was going to say, that's that's one way. I mean, I remember the rumors that both Facebook and Instagram were going to get dislike buttons. Oh, God, that would be so terrible. But it there is a lot of good things on there, too. Face. Oh, yeah, it would cause so much more issues. But there yeah. are good things, too. I have to say, I like, like I said, I like seeing my nieces and my nephews. I like seeing um, when people are getting married, when people get engaged, like wedding planning, if they're losing weight, like there are a lot of good things on there too. And then that's your way to kind of support your family member 
without being there. You know, if they're trying to lose weight, you can write on there like, hey, great job. If you need any help, let me know. Like, way to kick ass. You know, it just kind of makes you feel, at least for me being far away, it makes me feel not so far away. I know. I especially love the photos. It makes me wish I was in Hawaii. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, see, and I can make all my friends jealous. My my friend literally threatened to mute me be- during the winter in Chicago because he was like, I can't stand to see all your Hawaii pictures while I'm freezing my ass off. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I mean, you can. You could mute me if you if it really is like, God damn it, she's in Hawaii. You know, fine. That's what I told him. I'm like, if you want to mute me and then unmute me in the summer, do you, boo boo? It doesn't. I have no clue that you mute me, so I don't. It, I don't care. It doesn't yeah. really affect me. No skin off my nose, as they would say. But just wanted to end on a higher note instead of just saying like, watch your kids. Like, <laughs> just saying that social media can be used for you know catching up with your fam or your friends if. Because it's hard, you know, I don't know about everybody else out there, but it's hard sometimes to keep up with all your friends and your family. It's hard to, const- you know, to work and text and take care of your kids and, you know, try to make room for everything. So sometimes Facebook makes it easy to just type a little thing and say, hey, you're doing awesome to let people know that you are still there. Yeah. Well, and you know what else is really helpful? If you, because it's one of the reasons why I got rid of Facebook. I did not like that I was always on my phone. Mm-hmm. So... Now, on your phones, you can now limit your time mm-hmm. on specific apps, how long you want to do, be doing X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. to limit the time on your phone and on the apps in general. And again, you can do that for your kids also. Yes. The All end. of the parental <laughs> controls. All the parental controls, which is one of the nice things about social media. Yes, it kind of exposes your kids, but at least you can take some control over it. Control your your social media, honestly. That's what this is. Yeah. Well, different discussions of, about of raising your children in a social and technological technological age. Just basically be extra cautious, because I feel like we're so used to social media, and it feels so normal now that a lot of times we don't pay attention, and we need to. Exactly. I'd like yeah. to pay more attention to a lot of things. But now I have, like, three jobs. <laughs> it's also probably why marriages aren't the greatest either, because people are distracted by social media. But that's another topic. And I think that's also one of the reasons why me and Tom got off of Facebook. Because it is really distracting. And I even tell him sometimes, I'm like, get off your phone. Yeah, I saw a really funny, I'm not even on TikTok, but, you know, occasionally people share it on, like, you know, Instagram, Instagram. and stuff. Um, and I actually saw a really funny TikTok the other day. It was just this girl. She was like sitting on the desk. She's like, sign up for TikTok. I'm not going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. And then it shows like it flashes to a dark screen and she's laying in bed at night. And it says like three hours later and it just shows her laughing at TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much accurate for all social medias, not just TikTok. That that really is. It was funny. I was laughing at it. it. Um, social media though is definitely Pinterest because I find all of the great cooking ideas on Pinterest. Yeah, and I think that's a total like that's a different thing. Like you're on there legitimately like trying to do things like you're making a banner for your kid's birthday party or you're cooking dinner or you're making a new dessert for the fourth of July party. Like you're not just like scrolling through to scroll through, like you're on there with a purpose. I mean, when it first came out though, I was scrolling just to scroll because they have a full page of like things you might like. You know what I mean? So like Mm -hmm. so I would in the beginning of Pinterest would go on there just to scroll through it to see what shit's go- what's going on. Well, and, I and then like, they even have like a, a page where it's what all of your friends have posted yes. or like have saved. So like, it's like, oh, well, what is she liking now? You know? And I remember when I first started my business, people were like, there's a business act, act business part of Pinterest that you need to use to get like business. And I was like, really? People use Pinterest for business? Like, Everybody uses everything. Well, I would think that that would be more if you were making crafts and selling them. But writing a book, I don't really think. Supposedly, it's for everything. I still haven't figured it out. Like, I don't know. You could put your blog posts on Pinterest, yes, I guess. That's, a, that's actually a big thing is a lot of bloggers use Pinterest. 
Oh, for sure. But like the ones that I normally see, it's for like a recipe, a DIY right. thing. It makes sense why it's on there. Yeah. Not just a adventure like about you type of like blog post. Cause like you're not putting on any like, this is what I'm going to be doing today. DIY by Rietta. Apparently people do it though. I still haven't figured it out. So if anybody out there knows this Pinterest business business, let us know. <laughs> we'll learn something new. Yep. Then we'll talk about it <laughs> next time on how to deal. Dun, dun, dun. Basically. All right. We're rambling now. We're just going to. We're just going to end this now. Okay. You guys get the point. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Rietta. I'm Connie. And thank you for listening.